Good morning. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. We look forward to the uh, hearing and uh, very focused on everything we can do to continue to enhance aviation safety. But uh, first and foremost, uh, today, on the anniversary of uh, Lion Air Flight 610, I think first and foremost it's important that we remember the lives lost and, uh, again, express our deepest sympathies to the families and loved ones. And uh, we will never, never forget. And that will be our reminder as we look to aviation safety and the future. Dennis, what do you say to the families, uh, the victims' families who say, you coming here is too little too late? Yeah, Phil, uh, again, on this day, our, our deepest sympathies go with these families. And we've thought long and hard about uh, both of the accidents that have occurred. We've learned a lot as a company. We're humbled. Uh, it has only amplified our focus on safety going forward. And as I said, uh, we're never going to forget. But can you guarantee this would never happen again once this plane gets recertified? But Phil, we, uh, we're going to commit to doing everything we can to ensure accidents like this never happen again. Uh, we have made updates to the max uh, where we believe accidents like this will not happen again. And we're never going to stop focusing on safety and continuously improving. Mr. Mullenberg, a lot of families want to see you resign. I'm, uh, I'm focused on the job at hand. You know, I came to Boeing because we care about building safe airplanes for the world. Uh, that's what it's always been about. Uh, these two accidents occurred on my watch, and uh, I have a keen sense of responsibility to see that through to the Will finish. you resign? That's, uh, that's not where my focus is. Uh, my focus is on the job at hand, focused on safety, and we're going to do everything we can to ensure safe flight going forward. But Dennis, have there been discussions with the board that maybe once this is certified and the plane returns to service, it's time for you to transition out of the CEO job? Phil, those aren't uh, discussions that uh, I'm involved in, nor is that my focus. Uh, my focus here is on the job at hand. Uh, we have important work to do for the world. We know that uh, the work we do matters. Um, safety is at the very forefront of that. Uh, we have always been focused on safety, quality, and integrity as our core values, and that demands a sense of excellence in how we do our work. That's where my focus is. But you do know that you'll hear from senators today and congressmen tomorrow who will say, you are not the man to run both. Again, um, we understand uh, those criticisms and the, uh, those views, and uh, Phil, my responsibility, the responsibility of the Boeing Company is to design and build, provide safe airplanes. Dennis, Our job is, is, is to provide safe travel for the flying public. That's where my focus is. Dennis, are you able to answer the question that I, I know you're going to get today, which is, how did Boeing let this happen? How did Boeing let a plane with a design flaw get into the air? It's, uh, it's uh, something that we've spent a lot of time thinking about over the last, uh, over the last year. And uh, you know, we have a keen sense of responsibility. We're responsible for our airplanes. And uh, any accident, any accident with one of our airplanes is unacceptable. And uh, we've reviewed both of these accidents. We know uh, what needs to be fixed. We own that. We have a responsibility to do that. That's exactly what we're doing. And we're confident with the updates that we're making that uh, once the MAX returns to the skies, it'll be one of the safest airplanes ever to fly. We've been challenged and changed by these accidents. We've made mistakes and we got some things wrong. We're improving, and we're learning, and we're continuing to learn. The instant message conversation was um, between the 737 MAX chief technical pilot and a colleague. Um, and it, it expresses concerns about the operation of the MCAS. Um, Boeing knew about this instant message for months, but failed to share it with the FAA until recently. When were you made aware of the existence of the November 2016 messages? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, as I recall, I was made aware of that uh, message earlier this year. It was discovered as part of a, uh, a document uh, gathering process in response to a government investigation. So it was after the crashes you were made aware of it this year? Uh, sir, as I recall, I believe it was uh, prior to the second crash prior earlier second this year. Crash. Was it your decision to wait months before disclosing this to the FAA? Mr. Chairman, uh, at that point it had been uh, uh, identified as a document in response to an ongoing investigation. 
and I relied on our, our counsel to provide that to the appropriate authorities. As I became familiar with the details of the document over the last few weeks, um, as I expressed our, uh, our disappointment and, uh, and concern with uh, how this came to the FAA, I think uh, you heard the same from Administrator Dixon. Uh, I called him and uh, apologized for how this had come through the process. Again, I was in involved in the uh, document production process, but it counted on our team to make sure all the right authorities were notified. Okay, so um, we should look to the team then. In March, I chaired a hearing of the Aviation Subcommittee on, on these two crashes. Boeing did not see fit to give this committee that exchange, nor did Boeing give it to the FAA or the Department of Transportation. But what I find most stunning is your testimony here today that you said you first learned of this exchange a couple of weeks ago. These are senior leaders at Boeing in an exchange saying, and I will quote again, so I basically lied to the regulators. Look, I've practiced law a lot of years. You had your lawyers look over this document and they read a senior leader after these crashes has occurred saying they lied to the regulators. Mr. Mullenberg, how in the hell did nobody bring this to your attention in February when you produced this to the Department of Justice? How did you just read this a couple of weeks ago? Senator, uh, again, to clarify my, my earlier comments, um, I was made aware of the existence of this kind of document, this issue, as part of that discovery process in the uh, investigation early in the year, as you pointed out. Uh, at that point, I counted on my counsel to handle that appropriately. And uh, Did you read this exchange? I, look, I was made aware documents were being produced, th th that is passive voice and, and disclaiming responsibility. You're the CEO, the buck stops with you. Did you read this document? And how did your team not put it in front of you, run in with their hair on fire, saying, we got a real problem here? How did that not happen? And what does that say about the culture at Boeing if they didn't give it to you and you didn't read it? And if you didn't say, I want to read and see what happened, your testimony here earlier today is, well, we're not sure what they were talking about because he's not at Boeing anymore. H how did you not in February set out a nine alarm fire to say, we need to figure out exactly what happened, not after all the hearings, not after the pressure, but because 346 people have died and we don't want another person to die. Senator, as, as you mentioned, uh, um, I didn't uh, see the details of this exchange until recently. And uh, we're not quite sure what Mr. Forkner meant by that exchange. Um, his, his lawyer has suggested he was talking about a simulator that was in development in that time period. Uh, that's where he was working. Uh, that could be the case. We don't know. Uh, I fully support diving deep into this and understanding what he said and what he meant. Uh, but I can also tell you that in that same time frame where his original message was made. Mr. Gustafson still works at Boeing. Uh, Correct. Senator, he, yes, he does. Have I, you had that conversation with him? Senator, my team has uh, talked with Patrick as well. Have you had that conversation with him? Senator, I, I have not. 